Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Terence and I'm back with another video. In my Blender plus Fusion advanced compositing tutorial, I got a comment from, I'm not going to butcher this name, but he or she is saying that they're having some issues using the render layers inside of Blender. And after watching that section of the tutorial, I can admit that it, it does look a bit confusing if you don't know how render layers work. And also, when I was learning render layers inside of Blender 2.8, it was a bit confusing for me as well. So today I'm going to be clearing all that up and I'm going to be showing you guys how render layers work inside of Blender. First off, here's a quick scene that I just prepared. We've got three objects, Suzanne, a cube, and a background. We're going to be placing the cube and Suzanne on the same render layer and then placing the background on a separate render layer. I just added some materials to make it look a little bit more interesting. If we hit render, we'll get the expected outcome, just an image. But if we move up here to the top right, we'll see view layer. Let's just make two of them and we'll name one objects and the other background. If we right click on any of the objects, we won't get any options right now. That's because we need collections to make render layers work. I'm not sure if there are any other methods out there, but if there are and you know of any, feel free to let me know inside the comments. Here I'm just shift selecting the objects, pressing M on the keyword, clicking on new collection and I'll name it objects. I'll do the same for the background and I'll name that collection background. Now I can press the check mark to turn separate collections on or off. This is where you can start messing with render layers. If we right click on a collection and then go to view layer, we'll see a few options. Disable from view layer, enable in view layer, set indirect view layer, clear indirect view layer, set hideout and clear hideout. In a nutshell, it's pretty much just three options with on and off switches. Disable in view layer pretty much just turns off the collection so it doesn't render on that layer. So if we go to the background layer and disable the objects and then we go to the objects layer and disable the foreground, hit render, this is what we'll get. We're only seeing one layer because that is what's connected to the composite node. So if we jump to the composite tab, we'll see the nodes here and we can start adding in the other layers. So here you see we have the object. So let's add in another render layer and switch that to the background. If you try to composite one layer above the other here, you will run into an issue. That is because these layers have no alpha. If we should try to layer the objects above the background, we'll see that nothing happens. We'll have this ugly gray background or whatever color your background is set to in Blender. If we should flip the layers, placing the one on the bottom on the top and vice versa, it's still the same thing. We're going to see just the background and not our objects. Quick side note, we are layering these nodes with the alpha over node. The way it works is whatever image is plugged into the bottom is on top and whatever is plugged into the top is on the bottom. I don't know why, that's just how it works. If we attach our viewer node to the alpha channels, we'll see that it's all white. That's just telling us that there's no alpha in these images. Now the reason it doesn't work is because you didn't tell Blender to render alpha. Now to do this you have to go to the render properties and under film click transparent. If we hit render again then we'll start seeing some alpha. Remember this is crucial whenever you're using render layers. Now if we have a look at our image we'll see that it shows the render but it looks a bit odd. That is because it's just our objects and our background. There is no interaction between the two render layers, no shadows, nothing like that. The lights show up normally and that is because the lights are set globally. So we'll see the lighting on the objects and on the background. But there's just no interaction between the background and the objects. Remember on our background layer we had the objects disabled and uh, on the objects layer we had the background disabled. Now to see some interaction between the two, this is where the other two options come in. Set in the and the set hideout. Let's go back to our outliner and re-enable these render layers. This time on the objects layer we're going to select the background collection and we're going to set it to set hideout. Then on the background layer we're going to select the objects collection and set that to set hideout. Immediately we can see some changes. You can see that there is this cutout going on where you can see the background through the actual image. And that is exactly what the hideout option does. It creates a cutout in the image that is transparent. So let's hit render and see what we get. Immediately things are looking interesting. Over on the compositor, everything looks the way that it should. Our objects in background, shadows, light, everything is interacting the way that it should be. If we look at our background, we see a huge cutout, but we can still see the shadows on the ground and the foreground is just transparent because everything else around it, that area is what got cut out. I'm sure there are many applications for using the holdout, but personally, I haven't used it myself. I always use indirect. Who knows, maybe I'm not that smart, but I'm sure you guys can figure something out and get creative with using the holdout. Setting indirect is kind of the same story, only this time you'll not see a cutout. They'll cast shadows, they'll affect ambient occlusion, they'll receive reflections and all that, but you just won't see the objects in the render. Like we see here, the background just doesn't show the objects, but we can see the shadows that the objects cast on the background. You can also use lights with render layers, so you can have lights on certain layers and turned off on others so they'll affect different objects. 
Like here, we have lights from the left and the right hitting the objects, but we only have a light from the right hitting the background. This stops the objects from casting a shadow over to the right side. This is a really cool and effective way to light certain scenes. You can choose which lights affect certain objects and which objects cast shadows and where they're able to cast them. Just gotta get creative with it. Alright, that completes the tutorial. We're at the end of it. I hope you guys now have a better understanding of render layers inside of Blender. Have any questions, critiques, recommendations, let me hear them in the comments. Also, I was thinking of starting a Discord. Let me know what you guys think about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's your boy Terrence, and I'm out. Peace.